Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Jujutsu Kaisen, but today we're going to be checking out episode 12. And of course, last time was episode 11, and there, Nanami was still facing off against Mahito, and he did this really cool epic punch thing that I've gotten the, the gift behind me, and that was awesome. But all that really accomplished was just collapsing a bunch of rubble on Mahito, and then he said, Sorry, I'm gonna have to bail for now, and that was probably because he might have been sustaining a little too much damage at the time. He probably took a little bit of a heavy hit when he tried to mess with his soul there. But anyway, then, you know, we saw a little bit more about about Junpei Yoshino, you know that guy? He was going down a pretty dark path. He was about to kill this one teacher. He was about to unleash some kind of attack on him. I think it looked like he was. But then, that's when Itadori showed up and Itadori managed to befriend him. They started to, you know, but a friendship was starting to form. They went back to his house, they watched some movies, it was gonna be great. And hey, he even got Yoshino to start to rethink his actions, that killing people, you know, would potentially lead to you being corrupted. You know, he was starting to think that over. Until someone planted a finger, and not just any finger, one of Sukuna's fingers, into his house, and then his mom was horrifically killed. So all that went right out the window, and he went straight into psycho mode, and decided to attack the school. Specifically, he went after the resident pretty boy, believing that he was the one who planted the finger, because, you know, he's like the rich kid, so he might have access to the resources to make that happen. Of course, he didn't do that, it was all a setup, but... He decided to take it out on him and unleashed his own cursed spirit thing against him, which turned out to be this jellyfish thing, which at the time, I didn't connect the dots on that. Someone had to tell me that he has that jellyfish and that's what stung him in the arm and put all the purple blots on him. Also, when he lifted up his hair and showed on his forehead, that was not a result of like getting cursed powers from Mahito or anything. The bullies did that to him. That was from when they burnt him with the cigarettes, which is horrific. I mean, I, th I didn't think they did that much damage to him before. I was talking about how it's a crime what they were doing to him, but they, they freaking mutilated him with those things. I mean, that's just... Those kids were psychotic to do that. They literally tortured him. They left lasting scars. I mean, that's just way messed up stuff, man. That went beyond what I was anticipating. So yeah, real messed up stuff there, but now Itadori is trying to confront Yoshino before things continue to spiral down into chaos, but something tells me it ain't gonna pan out. So anyway... Well, I'd say we might have something resembling a bright tomorrow. <laughs> I'm looking ahead of us, maybe, but yeah, this episode was insane. Like that, they, 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 the build up to that was, was so good. And just poor, poor Junpei, man. I felt for him the whole time, you know? He was trying to validate in himself all of what he had thought was right. Because he was just repeating word for word what Mahito was saying about, you know, how humans, you know, they don't have hearts. And that, you know, it's like if somebody wants to kill them, then they can do it and you can't stop me. He desperately wanted to believe that, but he. And it, deep down, he didn't really, you know, it's just because he's had it so rough. He's had it insanely rough, as we've seen. He's gone through so much, the poor guy. And at such a, such a vulnerable age, it messed him up. And then he got pushed over the edge with his mom dying. He was, she was like the only one, you know, keeping him somewhat grounded. And, you know, just, just, just after that happens, it sucked down into a vortex of, of pain and misery. And yeah, Itadori was what was was you know talking was was trying to talk him out of it somewhat before he knew what was going on, but he made the right call, just you know calmly putting a stop to the fight and just asking him, "What's up? What went down?" Because you know, like he started to realize that something really bad happened, and he didn't just do this for no reason. And then once he found out about his mom, 
you know, he started to be really sympathetic towards him, and he started to, to, to get him out of it. He was going to talk him down, but Mahito was just waiting for that moment to, to strike here and to try to push <laughs> Itadori into switching with Sukuna. He turned him into a monster, poor Junpei, and now he says he's dead. Hope he ain't, hope he ain't dead. I mean, oh man, I'm, I don't know if I've been baited here. I've been, I've been tricked into thinking that he would survive. But, I, maybe. I'm hoping they find a way to bring him back. Maybe Sukuna can heal him, but he's like, I refuse, lol, and just laughed it up with Mahito. And that, that, that one thing he said when he tried to touch his soul, it just, I don't know, there was something really funny about that, where he's like, hey, you know, because me and you shared that good laugh two minutes ago, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let it slide that you tried to mess with my soul here. So I'll give you one break, but if you touch me again, <laughs> it ain't going well. So yeah, Mahito realized pretty fast what he's what he's dealing with there. Yeah, so I'm I'm guessing Mahito's uh, idol transfiguration just will straight up not work on Sukuna. He's he's much stronger than him. So even if he tried a second time. Sukuna's probably just so strong that it just would do nothing. Because he activated it, but Sukuna just blocked it outright. So, even if he wanted to try again, it, it wouldn't end well for him. He'd probably reverse it on him and just make him explode or something. But now, with Ichidori and Nanami working together, I think they'll stand a good shot here, because he said that he can hold him in place. And because Ichidori can actually do damage to him by attacking his soul, if he can just hold him there, and let him just pummel him into the dirt, then they can take him out. Heck, just cut his body up into pieces, leave only his soul behind, and just deck it straight in the face. End of the line there. So yeah, that's it for now, guys. But thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe to be updated on more. That would be great. Next time is episode 13. Dang, I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to check this one out just immediately following freaking episode 11 because that <laughs> was very good very good indeed but i'm glad i'll get to see more of what happens uh, next time immediately following thanks again to memorial day for that one but yeah i was on the edge of my seat that whole time loving that because you know this is what uh, you live for in a, in a good shonen like this <laughs> just those just the build up to those uh, epic fights where you know the, the the hero just lets loose he gets he finally gets pissed off enough to where he just goes to town, and they delivered on that supremely. Haven't seen a scene as good as that since, like, Demon Slayer, dude, you know? Where they just build up to it so beautifully, where they're they're up against the wall, they're against an opponent who's stronger than them, but they just get so mad, they let loose, and they actually do some damage to them. They might not necessarily win, but them rising up and actually hurting them is always a cool thing. So yeah, excited to check out the next episode, and I hope you guys are excited for it as well, and I hope to catch you there tomorrow. But until then, I will see you guys all later!